Hey, sports card collectors and investors, thanks for joining me again for our latest episode. Uh, for starters, let me give a quick Poison Ivy update. I am officially on the mend. I'm on a uh, steroid now that's helping, you know, kind of you know, get things going a little bit faster, but I do have kind of the crazy red eyes. So I have Poison Ivy around my eyes. I think I mentioned in my last video. Um, thank God it's not in my eyes, but it is uh, make, making me look a little weird these days. So my family's kind of looking at me sideways, but you know, we're just soldiering on and we'll get through it. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about why today is the best time ever to be investing in sports cards. And part of the reason why I'm making this video is I've been hearing a lot from, you know, different collectors, investors, uh, you know, that this is kind of the, the next junk wax era that essentially we're just going back to exactly what happened in the late 80s 90s and essentially what that was for those that are new to the hobby is that from 1986 to about 1993 time frame there was millions of people that were getting into cards in big part because what was happening then is people were finding out that their 50s mickey mantle cards were valuable and so and a big reason why they were is because kids in the 50s they didn't take care of cards they didn't put them in screw downs or top holders or one touches you know they were just putting them in their bike spokes and you know they were flipping them and tearing them and there was there was bubble gum in the packs that was sticking to the cards um you know so they weren't taking care of them it, they weren't necessarily printed back then you know, for, I guess they were somewhat collector's items, but I, I don't I don't know if the companies necessarily, you know, knew that they were gonna be worth what they were worth down the line. Um, they weren't necessarily marketed like that from my understanding. They were just something for kids to collect. It's kind of a cool, a cool collecting thing. And so nobody really thought that there was gonna be huge values associated with those cards. And so because of that, they're very scarce. And so it's difficult to find those cards um, you know, especially in high grades, now that we've got grading companies that, that are grading these cards, you know, back then we didn't really have that. There, w there was some grading in the 80s, 90s, but that was not a mainstream deal. That was not something when you, when you went to your card shop, you weren't looking at cases of graded single cards. You were looking at just cards that were in, you know, top loaders or, you know, those sorts of, you know, little cases, and it would say, um, near mint, 10 bucks, um, very good, five bucks. And it was just anyone's opinion as to whether or not that card was near mint or, or lesser, or if it was gem mint, you know, that was all up to the dealer and to the person that was buying it. And so for a lot of kids like me, we got kind of suckered into it because when I was eight years old, I couldn't look at a card and know what was mint and what was, you know, what was a, a PSA five and a PSA 10 back in 1989. So you know, the dealers had, had the edge on us, but you know, that was a great time for, for me as a kid to learn negotiation and to learn kind of how, uh, you know, it was kind of my int introduction to business, frankly, um, because you are kind of, you know, we, we had the, the, the Beckett price guides to where you could look up and see, you know, okay, oh, this card's worth 10 cents, this one's 25 cents, oh, this one's a dollar, and that's how you would gauge what everything was worth. So. Um, now, of course, everything is advanced considerably. And I would say the biggest advancement from today versus the 80s, 90s, it's not grading, it's not, um, you know, I mean, that, that's a huge piece of it, but the internet is the biggest advantage that we have as collectors and investors now. So the fact that you can go on eBay sold listings and in a second find out in the last 90 days what everything is sold for is a critical piece of data that we, we did not have back then, you know. So, you know, you factor in that, you know, yes, there are, you know, print runs on, you know, there's so many different sets. So, you know, I hear collectors saying like, oh, you know, we're going back into this, you know, junk wax era, but, the, you know, there's so many different sets and parallels and things. But, you know, it's great that we do have the parallels. We, we do have base cards that are very common, but we also have very rare cards and then you have everything in between. It's a perfect mix. So, you know, as long as they don't go absolutely nuts on print runs, as long as you still have rarity in there with the parallels, you know, and the different, you know, different colors and, um, you know, all the, the different variations of these cards, then, then we'll be just fine. And then of course, when you factor in that now everything is graded, you know, and whether it's, it's BGS or it's PSA or it's SGC, all of these are variables to gauge pricing and to and to help gauge you know gauge value of something, 
So, you know, that's something, again, that, that we didn't have. I mean, it would have been really cool in the late 80s if you had had, you know, an 89 score Barry Sanders that was the base rookie, and then you also had numbered, you know, different colors. That would have been really cool as a kid, you know, and I think that that would have helped too as far as just, you know, the, the rarity of, of card scarcity, you know, because in the end, that's what's going to be important. And the thing that's really exciting about this time, first off, the boom right now is bigger than what we had, in my opinion, in the late 80s, 90s, just in terms of everybody, all the different groups that, that are getting into it, because not only are people buying today's stuff, but they're buying the stuff from 20 years ago, the LeBron James rookie cards and all those parallels. And then you've got the Jordan stuff. And then you've got, you know, all that junk wax era, the 89 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Juniors, or all of a sudden those have doubled in price. And then you've got the vintage stuff going back to the, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s that everyone's buying up. Jim Brown rookie cards and, you know, Mickey Mantle stuff that's still very popular. So you've just got so much different inventory, so many different options now. And we have data at our fingertips that allows us to very quickly gauge pricing. So it's just an awesome time. And it excites me because I'm thinking about all the, you know, all the kids that are getting in now that in 20, 25, 30 years, like guys like me that have that nostalgia itch, you know, or that we're trying to scratch with sports cards. These kids are going to be doing the same thing in 25, 30, 40 years. And what does that mean for, for me and for us that are investing now? It gives, um, you know, it gives me pause to say, okay, this is legitimate because I feel that, you know, there's going to be another wave of this down the line. So even if sports cards sputter out in five years, seven years, and three months, you know, there is another surge that, that will come. It's a big enough industry and there's enough in, you know, people involved in it. Sports has gotten so big. The NFL, the NBA, the MLB, if you think about just those, those um, you know, sports leagues, even go back to, you know, the 80s when we were there. I mean, these leagues are way bigger profit machines than they were in the 80s. I mean, when we're talking about, you know, a lot of the sports card craze came because, you know, basketball started getting popular again with Michael Jordan and Magic and Larry Bird. So, you know, I mean, the NBA wasn't that was that was not, you know, if you were an owner of an NBA team in 1980, you are not worth anything near what these guys are worth today. These clubs are worth so much more. The NFL, look back at the NFL, it's progressed tremendously. I mean, you know, and, and granted, I know populations rise and everything else, but just the interest in the sport, it's global now. You know, the NBA, and the NBA is perfect proof of that. I mean, it's just a massive, massive ordeal now. So, you know, it's, it's never been better. I don't think you could argue against that, you know, it's never been a better time to be involved. And I, I know that, you know, I hear <laughs> I hear collectors out there that say, you know what, investors are, you know, people that are in this just for the money are ruining, you know, this hobby. And, you know, don't be like that. I mean, the reason why, you know, people say that is because, look, I mean, we're all, I don't care if you just love the look of the cards and you're just collecting those cards and you don't give a, a you know, a care at all about money. Maybe you're a zillionaire and you don't care about it. But deep down, we all care that our collections are worth something. There's something to that. It's not like you just pump a bunch of money into it and you're just like, you know what, I love these cards. And you know, if they're not worth a cent and they burn up in a, in a fire tomorrow, you know, then, you know, oh well, you know, I mean, that's just not reality. And you know what? You know what I'll say to that? For all the collectors that have a problem with people getting in for money, I, I can tell you one person that does care if your collection is worth money, and that is your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend. They care if, if it's worth money because they see you pouring all this, this money and this effort into it. And, you know, they're going to want to see something in return from it. I'm joking, sort of. But I think you understand my point. Most of us, even for those that aren't in it to flip or to invest for the long term, you still, when you're paying $1,000 for a card, you know, you probably want it to carry some value. I think deep down we would all say that. And frankly, there's enough sets and different parallels out there. If you're just a collector and you're going to hold this thing for a thousand years and you don't care about making any sort of return on it, that's perfectly fine. There are so many different sets and different options for you that there is so much out there for all of us that there's really, it's, it's silly when I see those sorts of comments of, you know, oh, this is ruining the hobby. It's not ruining the hobby. Just don't buy, you know, don't buy a graded card. Buy a bait, you know, buy an ungraded card. They're not that expensive if you really want a certain type of card. You know, there's plenty of base cards out there. So anyway, that, that's my rant. Um, and, you know, I have all the love for, for the collectors and the investors. I'm a collector and an investor. So I have that, that collector side of me. 
But there is a, you know, uh, obviously there's a big part of me that looks at this and says, hey, there is, there's great return here. There's great opportunity here to flip cards, sports cards, and do very well. There's, and, and there's just unlimited opportunities to do it right now. So take advantage of those opportunities and, you know, just enjoy this hobby. Where, whether you're, you know, just buying graded cards, just buying raw cards, just doing breaks, just doing, you know, I mean, we're all in this in part too because there are no sports. So this is our, you know, I'm I'm avoiding depression for you know by you know doing this sort of thing because there's nothing on TV for me to watch. There's the NFL draft. I think this NFL draft the last two days has been the most excitement I've had <laughs> from a sports perspective. You know, for the sports junkies out there, you know this is this is everything for us. I've never been more excited for a for a NFL draft than I was the last couple of days. So. Anyway, thanks for hanging with me through this video and for hearing my rant about my poison ivy and for um, you know some of the collectors out there. I love all you guys. I uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, please subscribe, and we will be back to you with another video soon. Take care.